Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I'm going to do an off-subject uh, Bible study. I'm going to take a break from the judges, although I do plan on finishing the series up, God willing. But this is going to be on star or stars. And no, not the Hollywood variety. Those are, yeah, not, not that variety. No, thank you. Now, just a quick intro. Sometimes when the Bible talks about stars, it's talking about lights up in the sky and other times it's talking about angels and being that angels are shining well you know <laughs> there you go so let's take a look what i call the law of first mention well there's other people call it that too but usually if you are concerned about finding out what a word or a phrase means, rather than going to a lexicon written by somebody that doesn't even believe the Bible to explain what a word means, in the King James, you can go to the first mention of that word, look at the context, and it will oftentimes, more often than not, give you an idea of what that word means. Now, some of the words have got multiple meanings, just like English. I remember one of the first puns I ever learned as a kid, elementary school. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? You know, like Tiger Woods golfer. Arnold Palmer, yeah, Jack Nicholas, yeah, uh, Chi Chi Rodriguez, whatever, yeah. I know, that's going back, right? Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants in case he got a hole in one? Double meaning, right? Yeah, I know, it's not funny. But in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6, the when the Lord's creating everything, Genesis 1, 16, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and we're talking about the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, the moon. He made the stars also. Now, is he talking about the stars up in the sky, or is he talking about the angels, or both? I don't know, 100%. So take it any way you want. When you read the first two chapters of Genesis, there is nowhere that it clearly says that God created the angels. When? It doesn't say that. But the Bible is not the book of angels. It's the book of Adam mankind and Adam is a special type of mankind the Bible mentions Satan but the Bible is not really about Satan so how do I know that angels are stars well we'll get more into that but turn your Bible to Job 38 verse 1 now, Job was mentioning some things to the Lord, and the Lord was not exactly happy. And the Lord answers is answering Job. Verse 1, Job 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? In other words, 
uh, Job, you're speaking in darkness out of ignorance, and your words are without knowledge. In other words, you don't know what you're talking about. Gird up now thy loins like a man. You know, have you ever heard the expression, put your pants on like a man? That's basically what he's saying here. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. I'm going to ask you a question, you, you tell me. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Oh, it's simple. I wasn't even around yet. <laughs> Declare if thou hast understanding. Oh yeah? Where were you when I created the earth? Tell me. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Now these are construction terms. We're talking about the foundation of the earth, the creation. Listen to this. Very Here's the punchline. Chapter 7. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Morning stars, sons of God shouting for joy. The foundation of the earth. These have to be angels. They have to be. Adam was not around until six days after the earth was the foundation of the earth. He didn't exist. So either these are stars up in the sky singing. You know, they sang together. Or they're angels. And the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, the sons of God in this verse cannot be mankind because Adam didn't exist until six days after the foundation of the earth. Compare this to Genesis chapter 6 when the uh, sons of God went in under the daughters of men and bare children and giants. You know, and then, you know, when David faced Goliath, you find out that the giants have six fingers and six toes. Uh, yeah. A very, very basic, simple thing, but churches don't want to touch on this because they don't want you to know. Yeah, they don't want you to know. So, stars and sons of God. So, sometimes we're talking about stars up in the sky. Sometimes we're talking about angels. And we're going to I'm going to nail that and bring it home. In Genesis 15, 5, God is speaking to Abraham. Well, actually, the Lord is speaking to Abram. All right, Genesis 15, I guess we'll do verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram. See, Abram, Abram uh, he, the Lord changes his name to Abraham. And Abraham means many nations. God actually told Abraham, Abram that he would become Abraham, the father of many nations. So, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield. What's a shield? Protection, right? Somebody shooting arrows at you, you better hope you got a good shield in front of you. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, children. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. 
And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not, this shall not be thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So Abraham, Abraham is going to have children. Not some but not his servant, but him. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards the heaven. Look up in the sky. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Now, I don't know if it, those of us that live out in the city, you can't see all the stars in the sky. It's what called light pollution. But you go out in the middle of the desert where there's not a, a town for 20 miles, the sky is full full of stars. You can't even count them all. There's that many. Look now towards the heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he, Abram, Abraham, and he believed the Lord, and he believed in the Lord, and he, the Lord, counted it to him, Abraham, for righteousness. Now, there's people will tell you, oh, yeah, keeping the law, that's what makes us righteous. Yeah, that's the um, Hebrew roots heretics. Yeah. No, thank you. So, in this instant, stars are lights up in the sky. In this instance. In Genesis 22:17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, children, as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Hmm. There, I've heard that there's probably millions and millions of stars in the heaven. And how many grains of sand are on the seashore? God says he's going to multiply Abraham's seed like the sand on the seashore. Does that sound like a few million you-know-whos in the Middle East fulfill that? Do they possess the gate of, their, of his enemies? Do you know there was a time when the Royal Navy, English Royal, you know, the British Royal Navy controlled all the sea lanes. All the sea lanes. And it wasn't until the end of World War II that the United States surpassed England as the largest navy in the world. Well, guess what? We're under God's judgment. Guess who has one of the largest navies in the world now, China. China has more submarines than the United States does. And if you go to the West Coast, to their universities, uh, their Ch Chinese nationals are full. Their classes are full of Chinese nationals, engineering and what have you. Just like we did with Japan prior to... Uh, December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor. Judgment, people. Judgment. Genesis 26, 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Does that little nation over in the Middle East bless the rest of the world? If you don't know the answer to that, uh, you need to do some studying. I mean, let's face it. You know, there was a time when there was an earthquake or, or uh, floods or 
or natural disasters. The United States was there with food and shelter and, you know, blankets and what have you. Of course, I'm sure the you-know-whos were charging the federal government a lot of money to do it, but we blessed the world. Do you know the United States fed the world? Personally, I think it's a curse to feed the Africa. I think it's a curse to feed Africa. Maybe evolution, survival of the fittest has a place. I, you know, because now that they're in huge numbers, they're killing all the farmers, which isn't a very good plan. You know, you, you got to think more than five minutes ahead. Really, you, you do. You know, killing your farmers is not a very good plan. So, and in thy seed shall all the nations, same word as Gentiles, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Okay, I think we need to take a look at something here. Turn to Genesis 37. Joseph, now remember, Joseph was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's name was cha changed to Israel. Jacob had 12 sons. We're going to take a look at this. Genesis 37. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Uh, let's see. Now, Bilhah and Zilpah were the uh, handmaidens that Jacob had uh, children with for his uh, two wives. So he had four, four women he had children with. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys think this is some kind of fantasy. You know, oh, yeah, I get a different woman every night. Problem is, uh, when you have children, then all the kids are fighting each other. You know, oh, well, you know, like what happened with King David. One of his kids, by a different wife, tried to kill King David. And some of his kids killed his other kids. So you could say, well, you reap what you sow, you know, so. Verse 3. Now Israel, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. When you hear Jacob or you hear Israel, it's interchangeable. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And every time I read that, I think of plaid. You know, the Scotch plaid. The Scots, you know, they have plaid. That's what I'm thinking of. I, I don't know. You know, maybe I'm just throwing that out there. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So the other kids hated Joseph. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. Well, when you're when you have wheat or barley, you know, that's what sheaves are. Have you ever heard of uh, the Bible song, the hymn, bringing in the sheaves, 
bringing in the sheaves. We will come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Boy, I haven't heard that one in a long time. And yeah, I know. Don't quit my day job. Oh, wait, I'm retired. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I know I got no... I actually had a decent voice, believe it or not, when I was in uh, uh, junior high school. And then my voice changed. And then I'm stuck with this. Blah. So they were binding sheaves in the field. Well, you know, you cut the wheat down and you have a sheaf and then you, you shake it and you get the uh, wheat berries, the wheat kernels from it. And then the, the rest of it, you throw it off to the corner and burn it, right? Or whatever. For behold, we were... Now, this is jo Joseph's dream. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose. And also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. What is obeisance? Well, it comes from the root word obey. Obeisance means they bow down. So Joseph's sheaf rose up, stood up, and everybody else's sheaves bowed down. Verse 8, And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Are you going to be our ruler? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? Dominion, that word comes from dominate. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now, we're going to tie this into Revelation chapter, I think it's 12. I'll have to look it up. And he, Joseph, dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren. And behold... I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars, eleven stars, stars, right? That's what the Bible study is all about. The sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. They all bowed down to me. And when he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him. Jacob Israel rebuked his son Joseph and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Oh, he's getting ready to interpret this dream. Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Ah, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars. His father, his mother, and his eleven, eleven brethren. See, the Bible interprets the Bible. If you got a King James. If you got any other version and this stuff doesn't make sense, well, you got a problem. So, the sun is... Jacob Israel, the moon's his mother, and the 11 stars are his 11 brothers, the, you know, of the 11 of the 12 tribes of Israel. And his brethren envied him. They envied, his brothers envied Joseph. But his father observed the saying. You know, Jacob Israel paid attention to this. So... Where does this tie into? Let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman, which I believe is the church, a woman clothed with the sun. Oh, wait a minute. What was the sun in Genesis that we just read? That was Jacob Israel, right? A woman, the church, clothed with the sun, Jacob Israel, and the moon, uh, Israel, Jacob Israel's wife, and under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Twelve stars. 
Hmm. Why 12? 12 tribes of Israel. There you go. You know, and the thing is, if you've never read Genesis and you read Revelation, you wouldn't make the connection to Joseph's dream. You would never make that connection. Never. Because the way to understand Revelation comes from the rest of the Bible. Uh, mostly the Old Testament. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing a worth in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Dragon. Uh, who loves dragons? Doesn't China love dragons? Oh, yeah. And why red? What color is red? Uh, are, are, are people that are called reds, aren't they called communists? Yeah, they call them reds. Is that a coincidence? Hmm, I wonder. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars, the stars, the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Yep, got to read the Old Testament if you want to understand the New Testament. Important. All right, so let's go back to the Old Testament. Exodus 32, 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. All right, let's go to Numbers. You know, uh, the stars of heaven. Take a look at the uh, take a look at a picture of the Milky Way. You know, it looks white like milk, and that's why they call it the Milky Way, because there's so many hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of stars that it looks like milk. And God said He would multiply your seed, your children, as the stars of heaven. All right, let's go to Numbers chapter 24. We're going to take a look at the whole, well, I don't know the whole thing, but uh, let's see. All right, we got Balak is get or Balaam is getting ready to curse well, he was hired to curse Israel, but instead he's going to bless them. Um, I guess we'll do verse 14. And now behold, I go unto my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. So we're going to tell... Bal uh, Balaam's going to tell Balak, the evil one, the Canaanite, what uh, God's going to do, what Israel's going to do to the Canaanites in the latter days. Latter days, last days. And he, Verse 15, And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, 
he hath said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, Jacob Israel, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheph, not Seth, Sheph. A star out of Jacob, Jacob Israel, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. What's a scepter? It's like a, a wand that uh, kings would have that denoted rulership. And he's going to smite or strike the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheph. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Out of, Israel, uh, out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion domination, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, now Amalek was the grandson of Esau, and God didn't like Esau. He hated Esau. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. We're not talking about just one person named Amalek. This is Amalek was the first of the nations. That word there is Gentiles. But his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Hmm. So... Doesn't sound like the Lord likes Amalek. No. All right, let's take a look at Scepter real quick. Now, remember, Christ was of the tribe of Judah. Judah was the king tribe. Genesis 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Hmm. What does it mean, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies? Well, uh, if, you, if you have your hand around the neck of your enemies, you're going to be able to choke them to death, right? So Judah is going to be very powerful in war, it looks like. And thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Rulership. Judah is a lion's whelp. Hmm, a lion. You ever heard of the lion of the tribe of Judah? Yeah, Christ. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rise him up? The scepter, the scepter was a sign of rulership well let's take a look at webster's 1828 dictionary uh if you were to look at the geneva or the 1611 version of the king james you will notice that there are a number of spelling variations i mean sometimes you'd have to they would spell the same word like two or three different ways uh, Noah Webster, his 1828 dictionary, is well worth having, really, it is. He standardized spelling for the English language in the United States, because before that, it was all over the place. Scepter, noun, Latin, uh, from to send or thrust, coinciding with uh, Scipio, that is, a shoot or rod. Yeah, perhaps, you know, a shoot. Uh, you ever heard of a, something shooting up 
from the ground, a seed shooting up from the ground, a staff or baton borne by kings on solemn occasions as a badge of authority, uh, an ensign of royalty, uh, royal power or authority, also a constellation. Hmm, I didn't know that. Uh, and he actually quotes Genesis 49, verse 1. He actually, uh, uh, well, not quotes, but uh, references that. So, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Shiloh. You may not know it, but Shiloh and Shalom... Uh, basically same root word. It means peace. You ever heard of Jerusalem? Jerusalem, Salem, Salem, Shiloh, uh, city of peace. So the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Who's going to gather us? Christ is going to gather his people eventually. One day, it's going to happen. All right. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 10. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are as this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Hmm. Deuteronomy 4.19 A warning from the Lord. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven. Are they talking about the stars in the sky or the host of heaven, the angels? It could be I think in this aspect, I think it's talking about the angels because he says, should us be driven to worship them? Could be the angels, could be the stars in the sky. You ever heard of astrology? Don't they basically do their lives by the stars? Oh yeah. Oh, you've got the thing of Leo the lion. Uh, which is a corruption of Christ, right? Or Sagittarius, or, you know, uh, Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. Uh, you know, you get the idea. Uh, I can't even think of all the different uh, astrology. Astrological signs. Uh, I had to look it up. Aries the ram, Taurus the bull, because uh, astrology is a lot of bull. Gemini the twins, Cancer the crab, Leo the lion, Virgo the virgin, not too many of them around anymore. Libra the balance, and the scorpion, Scorpius, uh, zodiac signs, right? Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Cancer, uh, Sagittarius, uh, Pisces, yeah, you know. So, and lest thou lift up thine eyes into heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Is it possible the angels uh, claim to be the stars in the sky? I, I don't know. You know, Sagittarius and Libra and whatever. I don't know. But I remember Jeannie Dixon used to have a column in the newspaper in the 70s and she would every day have a different thing to say about 
astrology. From what I understand, Nancy Reagan followed her a lot. Yeah, I think I'll trust the prophets of the Lord. So, Deuteronomy 10.22 Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten persons. That's seventy people, people. And now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Deuteronomy 28.62 Oh boy, we got to read this one. All right, in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 58, we receive a warning of the Lord. Uh, this is something you'll never hear on TBN. Never, 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 never. If, I-F, big I-F, if, if thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law, that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Well, if you're on the receiving end of a plague, uh, it's not going to seem very wonderful, but uh, yeah. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. And the plagues of thy seed, your children, even great plagues, and of long continuance. It's going to continue for a long time. And sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of. And they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law. So, not only am I going to hit you with diseases that are not uh, that are written in the law, but I'm going to hit you with diseases that are not written in the law. I'm going to get you coming and I'm going to get you going. And every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed because you wouldn't listen hey you don't want to listen no problem i get rid of you and ye shall be very left few in number whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the lord thy god do you know what race is the least Numerous race on the face of this earth. The white race. I don't know about Europe, but in the United States alone, abortions decimated the white race. Uh, Civil War. World War I. World War II. Do you know who fought mostly in World War II? Mostly whites. They didn't, generally, they didn't put blacks in combat. They were driving trucks, loading supplies. Yeah, there was a few black combat units, but, you know, Tuskegee Airmen, which, if you listen to the media, they were the greatest pilots of all time. You know, not to take anything away from them, but uh, I'm just saying. Generally, it was whites who killed whites. Amer Germans in America killed Germans in Germany. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good, see, when you were obedient, the Lord rejoiced to do good for you, and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you, and to bring you to naught, to nothing. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, other gods, 
which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Sounds like South Africa and a lot of other places. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it was even. And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again by, with ships. Now I wonder if that's physical Egypt or spiritual Egypt. By the way thereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwoman, and no man shall buy you. You're going to be slaves, and nobody's going to buy you, purchase you. Now, we just read this. Uh, well, I just read this. Judges chapter 5. We just I just did that study. Uh, let's see. Where should I start? Ah, Judges 5.18. Zebulun and Naphtali, those are two tribes of Israel, by the way. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. The kings came and fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan, the enemy, in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. They fought from heaven. The stars, the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Sisera was the enemy. The stars, are they talking about stars in the sky? Are they talking about Israel being compared to stars? Or are they talking about angels? Could be, could be uh, angels or it could be the uh, Israel. So let's get uh, moving. In 1 Chronicles 27, uh, 23, David numbered Israel. But David took not the number of them from 20 years old and under, because the Lord had said he would increase Israel like to the stars of the heavens. Now, you may not know it, but in Bible times, a man was considered, a boy was considered a man when he got uh, basically 20. That was when he was considered a man. I don't know where they get this bar mitzvah 12 years old from. I can't find it in the Bible anywhere. But if you were 20 years old, uh, that was when you were given a sword and you'd go to battle for the Lord. Go to, you know, you got drafted in the army at some points in Israel's history. So David took a census. He wanted to see how many soldiers he had. And the Lord was not pleased with him doing that. I, I'm not exactly sure. There's probably something along with David's intention. You know, David probably wanted to say, well, I got an army of two and a half million men. You know, I, I don't know. But the Lord plagued Israel because of David's numbering the army. Wasn't, was not, the Lord was not pleased. And David repented of that. 
All right, so in Nehemiah 9.23, their children also multiplied, multiplied thou as the stars of heaven and broughtest them into the land concerning which thou hast promised to their fathers that they should go in to possess it. All right, let's take a look at Psalms chapter 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes, babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Yes, the Lord has enemies. Thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man? that thou art mindful of him, and the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And yes, sometimes stars refer to uh, lights up in the sky. Psalms 136.9, the moon and stars to rule by night. For his mercy endureth forever. So the Lord's mercy endures forever. Psalms 147 verse 4. He, the Lord, he telleth the number of the stars he calleth them all by their names. Uh, is it talking about stars up in the sky or angels? They all have names. Maybe both. Maybe both the stars in the sky and the angels. Now, why would I say that? Psalms 148, verse 3. Praise ye him. Sun and moon, praise him, all ye stars of light. Hmm. Or is it talking about the sun and the moon up in the sky and the stars in the sky? Or is it talking about Jacob Israel, his wife, and stars of light, the, the, uh, the angels? Isn't Satan called an angel of light? Huh, could be. Now, if you're interested, uh, you, we go to Isaiah 13, verse 10. Uh, this is, uh, is connection with Matthew 24, Mark 13. Also, the book of Joel and the book of Revelation. And I did a... Let's see, I got a commentary on Isaiah. I got a commentary on, I think, Jeremiah, too. Yeah, Jeremiah. I think, yeah, Joel. And Revelation I haven't done. But, in, but these tie in together. Isaiah 13.10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light talking about the end times 
The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. That is going to be one of the end times signs that the it's getting close to the end. It's going to be dark. So let's take a look at Isaiah 14. This is a very, very interesting verse. Let's see, where should we start? Isaiah 14 and verse uh, 11. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. You ever heard of somebody say, uh, pompous? He's pompous. It's like a celebration over the top, you know. Maybe I should look it up. Pomp, a noun, Webster's 1828, Latin, pompa, pomp, pompa. A procession, distinguished by grandeur and splendor, as the pomp of a Roman triumph, a show of magnificence, a parade, a splendor. Uh, yeah, all right, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see, Isaiah 14. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, voils. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Positive confession. You can hear about all this on TBN. Positive confession. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Speaking of God, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Positive confession's not working for uh, yeah, Satan here, Lucifer. And you know what? You'll have people say, oh, well, that's not talking about Satan. Satan and Lucifer is not the same. You know, read about Revelation 12, the war in heaven. I mean, you know, come on, people, be real. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 31. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeremiah 31, 31. Everybody should know this verse and have it marked in their Bibles. Uh, it's also a companion verse would be Jeremiah 3 and verse 8, where God divorced Israel, but not Judah. See, there's 12 tribes. But if you listen to the church world, they'll try to tell you that one tribe is all 12. Uh, how does that work? You know, I, I, I can't figure that out. But God divorced Israel. So next time they tell you that uh, the you-know-whos have an unconditional covenant, show them Jeremiah 3.8, where he divorces them. Boy, that'll, uh, that'll get you kicked out of Bible study. I should know. I've been, I've been kicked out of every church I've ever attended. And a lot of, <laughs> a lot of places online too. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Quoting, quoting the Bible is hazardous 
to false doctrines. And they can't have that. No, uh-uh. Jeremiah 3131, 31, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. You listen to the Hebrew roots, they're, oh, God's going to renew his covenant. Yeah, it didn't work the first time, but we're going to give it a second chance. No, it doesn't say renewed. No, it says new. Okay, you take an old car and you shove a, a new engine in and a new transmission. It's still not a new car. It's the old car. No. When you get a brand new car, you get a brand new car. Not rebuilding the old one. That ain't a new car. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. What did Jesus say when he took the bread and the wine at the Last Supper? He said, this is the blood of, my, of the new covenant. New. N-E-W. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Why? Why Israel and Judah? Because they're not the same. They're not the same. Except for in the minds of demon nominational churchgoers and their lying pastors. Verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. They broke the covenant, not the Lord. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. A husband. What is the church called? The bride. Well, if you got a bride, you got to have a husband, right? And if you got a husband, you got to have a bride. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. What people have God's law written in their hearts? The black Hebrews of Africa? I don't know about that. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, what ordinances? The sun and the sky and the moon and the stars for at night. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. As long as there's a sun in the sky and a moon and stars at night, there's going to be the seed of Israel. Oh, yeah. So, and if you want to, you can keep reading, you know. So let's keep going here. Let's take a look at Daniel chapter 8. Now, if there's one book in the Bible that I feel is my weakest, it would be the book of Daniel. I, I there, There's a reason why I've never done a commentary on the book of Daniel. It's, 
I don't know. It I, to me it hasn't been revealed yet. Daniel chapter eight verse one. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, and I'm sorry, verse 3. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high. But one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. Now, when you're talking about horns, generally in the Bible, you're talking about uh, kings, government, that kind of thing. And when one's high, it's in charge. I, and I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Now, some people say this ram was Alexander the Great, who was a Greek, which set the stage for the, the whole area of the Middle East uh, to have Greek as the common language in the time of Christ. You know, the New Testament was written in Greek. And Alexander conquered basically all the known world at that time, pretty much. The ram pushed west, north, south. Uh, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, and he did according to his will and became great. That's why they called him Alexander the Great. And as I was considering, behold, a an he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable, notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with C-H-O-L-E-R, Cloeler against him and smote the ram and break his two horns and there was no power in the ram, ram to stand before him but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand now Alexander died early on I might have this messed up but I'm just pointing that out therefore the he goat waxed very great and when he was strong the great horn was broken Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the I'm sorry. The ram was probably Medo-Persia, and then the he-goat was Alexander. I think. I think. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great. When he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. See, when Alexander the Great died, his four generals split up his huge territory that they had conquered with him. So you had four, uh, four of them. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. Host of heaven. Uh, are these angels? Possibly. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Hmm. Does this tie into Revelation 12? I kind of suspect it does. Now, I know we read it. We'll read it again. Revelation 12, uh, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail, tail, drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. See, there was a war in heaven. And we're not talking about 
burning stars in the sky. We're talking about angels here. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. See, in Revelation 12, 7, it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. And then they were booted out of heaven. So that's why I think they're referring to here. Uh, verse 10, Daniel. Daniel 8, verse 10. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. Isn't that what Satan did in uh, Isaiah 14? Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto them, that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, and then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Now, Gabriel was the angel that uh, came to Mary and told him to name the son Jesus. Gabriel is one of the top angels, if you ask me, just like Michael. 17. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. Yeah, I, I think I'd be afraid too. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Uh... So, he's saying that this vision is going to be towards the end. So, maybe Alexander in the past is a type of the future, or the future is a type of the past. I'm not sure. Like I say, Daniel is a hard book. I don't understand it. I'm just doing the best I can. May the Lord forgive me if I'm misleading and I'm not correct. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee to know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred and evil. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. So this is the vision for the end times. Oh, I was right. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia, Greece. Alexander the Great, he was Greek. Well, they say Macedonian, but Macedonia was part of Greece. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king, Alexander. Now that being broken, whereof, whereas four stood up for it, Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. See, the four nations, the four kingdoms, the four king, uh, generals, the four generals split up the his Alexander's mighty kingdom. And uh, the idiots fought each other and then weakened each other. And uh, guess what? Rome found that to be easy pickings because... You know, when, you're, when your kingdoms are divided and you're fighting against each other, your kingdom doesn't stand. It can't. 
So then God rose, raised up Rome. And people don't realize this is why the New Testament was written in Greek, because Greek was the common language of the Middle East at this time. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power, not in the power of the first king. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Now we're talking about the end times here. Time of the beast, the Antichrist. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Ah, what do you mean not by his own power? Now, who is the power behind this entity? Um, I believe the answer to that is Revelation chapter 13 and verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon. You know, the dragon, the, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. See, the beast gets his power from the dragon, the devil, and Satan. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So, let's go back to Daniel 8 and verse 24. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. This mighty, this mighty one's going to destroy the whole, the mighty and holy people. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft, witchcraft, I think, to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true, therefore shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision but none understood it. Yeah, I, I can I can relate to that. So, uh, Daniel, what a hard book to understand. I think I'm going to close this out right now. So this will be Stars uh, Part 1. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.